Good morning to all. I welcome you to this webinar. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, dissemination event of our project and uh, aims to uh, help uh, higher education educators of all disciplines to easily and effectively incorporate sustainability teaching in their courses. I'm pleased that I coordinate a, a, a very good and a very productive team. And now uh, in this uh, webinar participate, have registered more than 160 participants. Uh, just for your information, uh, the, the whole webinar will be video recorded and will be uploaded to our website at the end of the of this meeting. Uh, and uh, we'll also provide um, certification of attendance to all participants. So thank you very much again. And now the floor belongs to Simone, who is the chair of the Mediterranean Solution uh, Network. Simone, thank you very much. So thank you, Giorgio, for this introduction and thanks to all the organizers uh, of this event. Uh, I'm uh, the network manager of SDSN Mediterranean and I speak also on behalf of Professor Angelo Riccaboni, which is uh, the um, chair of uh, SDSN Mediterranean. SDSN Mediterranean is a regional network SDSN is an acronym that stands for Sustainable Development Solutions Network, and it, it belongs to the global network launched by Professor Jeffrey Sachs from Columbia University, and it's an initiative uh, under the auspices of the United Nations. Uh, the aim of this network uh, as uh, uh, in, is really in line with the aims, general scope of the EU STEPS project, because we aim to um, develop uh, education activity and research activities with uh, the, uh, the aim and the scope of uh, enhancing the knowledge of the Agenda 2030 and contribute and uh, uh, boost the achievement of the SDGs in the Mediterranean region. As you may know, probably the Mediterranean region is a very complex region because of different cultures, different religions, languages, and also economies. Uh, from uh, a report of UF, from UFM uh, of 2020, uh, Mediterranean, the Mediterranean is considered a hot spot for climate change. In fact, uh, it warms 20% faster than the rest of uh, the world. Uh, the temperature is expected to raise 2.2 degrees uh, by 2050 if the situation uh, remain as uh, the, the one it's now. 20, uh, uh, 250 million people is expected to, to become water poor in the next 20 years. So while food demand in the region uh, is set to increase and soil erosion is a problem together with uh, desertification and uh, overexploitation on fish stocks, um, we think that uh, there is no uh, time to wait again to act and to find solutions. So to find solution is our main, um, main activity for SDSN Mediterranean. Just to give you an idea on of uh, two, uh, two, three uh, projects that we are putting forward uh, with the network, uh, I, I want to mention um, the MOOC, the Massive Open Online Course uh, that we have launched three years ago. And uh, um, uh, it, it has already uh, more than uh, 3,000 enrolled students uh, uh, to the course from, th from not only the Mediterranean region, but from all over the world. The title of the MOOC of the course is Sustainable Food Systems, a Mediterranean Perspective. 
And this is a course um, which uh, uh, is taught by um, around 15 different experts and um, professors from different universities from the, mm, around 10 countries on the uh, of the Mediterranean region. So we are really committed on the education sector. Uh, and I want you also to mention the project which is called uh, Delivering EU Studies on Agenda 2030 that started this year uh, funded by uh, the Jean Monnet, uh, a Jean Monnet module project, which is um, which has uh, as target university students, but also citizens and other um, interested people in understanding policies um, uh, for uh, the achievement of the Agenda 2030. We uh, plan to open up this, this second project to uh, all the countries of the Mediterranean region uh, through the network, through disseminating through the net, the Mediterranean red network, this opportunity for all. All the two, the, the two courses that I mentioned are for free. Everyone can uh, uh, enroll to these courses. The first one through the um, global platform edX and the second one uh, through the platform of the University of Siena, which is uh, uh, the host institution um, with the Santa Chiara Lab of the University of Siena, the host institution of SDSN Mediterranean. Of course, uh, SDSN Mediterranean is happy to collaborate with all the other networks, national networks and regional networks uh, of the Mediterranean regions, but also of uh, neighborhood uh, regions and countries. Uh, so uh, it's my pleasure also to, uh, to speak before uh, the colleague uh, Nikos Theodosiu, uh, which is the chair of uh, another network, so, but I don't want to uh, anticipate nothing. And uh, I thank you again uh, very much for this great opportunity as the SM Mediterranean is, is here to collaborate to, uh, to, to this project. Uh, so we are happy to, to share with all our uh, members uh, the results and the opportunities that EU STEPS uh, want to disseminate to people around the Mediterranean region. So thank you very much again and uh, uh, have a good day, good work uh, with uh, this uh, event and all the projects. Uh, thank you, Simone. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for saying all these uh, very interesting uh, informative things about uh, this uh, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Networks. I'm here on behalf of um, SDSN Black Sea. Uh, this is another uh, regional network as SDSN Mediterranean, comprising a very uh, complex area as the Mediterranean area. Our network comprises 12 countries actually from the Balkans all around the Black Sea up to uh, the Caspiana. So it's a very uh, difficult and very challenging and very interesting uh, uh, area. Uh, our role is to find solutions for the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals because uh, the United Nations, when they created these networks, they anticipate, they expect that um, universities and research centers who mostly comprise these networks um, will come up with uh, new ideas and new solutions uh, for the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. And um, uh, in this direction, I am very happy to be here um, in this uh, webinar organized by uh, EU Steps because we, we think that um, the incorporation of sustainability issues in uh, higher education courses is very important since um, we believe that through education, we can uh, manage to, to enhance understanding and uh, implement the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. So our target group, through the teachers who are, will attend this um, seminar today, uh, our target group, which is the, uh, the students, uh, will, um, will be able to promote and to implement uh, in, a, in, a, in a better way than um, the one we did up to now, uh, implement the sustainable development goal, goals for the future of, um, of everyone and for the, for the future of the planet. 
So we will be here attending this, um, this webinar. And uh, I hope that um, by the end of the day, we will be able to have a fruitful discussion with the organizers and with the participants uh, in this um, very interesting uh, topic. So I wish you all the best. And I give the floor to, to George. Good morning again from me. Now I have a very short presentation about the premise and objectives of our project. Uh, I have prepared it in a form of uh, concept maps, which is a very interesting teaching and research technique in education. So uh, any, the EU steps is an Erasmus Key Action 2 project and uh, the participants are the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki from Greece, which is the coordinator. I am and Nikos from the Aristotle University, the University of Aveiro and the University of Aberta from uh, Portugal, the University of Siena from Italy and the Global Footprint Network from the United States. The ultimate goal of this project is to prepare a new generation of sustainability conscious citizens and professionals. And our main target groups are the higher education uh, institute students, educators, management and administration uh, staff. We have two main goals. The first is to develop educational material for sustainability teaching. We have almost 100% uh, uh, to this uh, goal. And the second main goal is to develop an online campus footprint calculator for universities. Both of them will be free of use. And uh, especially the educational material, which it is already available in our website, uh, is proper for undergraduate and graduate students from all disciplines. This educational material is comprised of a student's book, educator's book, administrative staff book, and uh, we also provide guidelines for sustainability courses. And at the end of the project, we will incorporate all of them in a MOOC. For the educational material, we have adopted the hands-on experiential approach to learning. And the material is already available in four languages, English, Greek, Portuguese, and Italian. Now, more details about the project will be shared to you by Sara from Portugal. Sara, the floor is yours. Bon, bon dia. Good morning from the campus of the University of, uh, of Aveiro. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, my main uh, point uh, uh, to present to you is basically to briefly uh, uh, tell you what we have uh, achieved so far, the deliverables we have produced, and what uh, we intend to deliver this, this current year. So. Our main first goal to be able to communicate to all uh, the project information, the events, our outputs, and of course, as George said, available to all um, in four different languages, uh, English, Greek, Portuguese, and, and Italian. And through our website, you will be able to see who we are, what the project aims, our approach, and of course, to have news on the events, on all the resources uh, we produce. So all of them are, uh, are and will be available in our, in our website. You are very welcome to, to visit us. And our main intellectual output throughout this year was the development and dissemination of teaching materials. Um, they will be further explained to you by Federico um, um, just uh, in a minute. And uh, of course, these teaching materials are also um, available in, in the different languages we, we told you about. And it provides a lot of uh, uh, different uh, uh, slides, uh, class exercises, games, and all the different activities and readings you can promote uh, with, uh, with students. And all of this is available through a, a, a quick registration link where you can download all the materials in the four different languages. 
uh, and the, the different outputs will be detailed by, um, by Federico. Uh, well, also because it's important to involve uh, the wider community, university community, uh, we developed an online training course for educators and PhD students from 10 different universities from Europe as well as, uh, as Brazil. And through three weeks, we developed different uh, activities. We discussed the concepts of the project that we are involved in. We developed uh, different games and also the type of activities that, we, uh, that you will see that you can promote also as educators with, with students in, uh, in, in higher education universities. And we finished uh, the, this, uh, this last year with the publication of an ebook uh, that tries to revise the literature and tell more about the trends on uh, uh, education for sustainability, also the barriers and the challenges. And we try to um, give a, 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 to have a look on the trends also in pedagogical approaches in these uh, in sustainability education and the use of footprint methodologies to uh, embrace this this challenge. So you are very welcome to to access the ebook through our website. So this was uh, mainly what we have so far discussed. We will be able to discuss more throughout this uh, session. And what is in our pipeline to deliver this year um, is of course the need to, uh, um, to provide training to the wider community. And we want to involve the administrative staff of these four universities. Uh, to be involved uh, in the discussion of the uh, concepts and also in the involvement and the development of the um, university calculator. And we also provide a module for other universities to involve and train administrative staff of the universities. Uh, we intend to uh, promote and to try to uh, develop some guidelines to foster interdisciplinary uh, training course, sustainability courses in universities. And of course, with the uh, uh, help of a lot of different educators, we are implementing our education materials throughout the year, trying to assess uh, the, the impacts to improve uh, the contents and to, of course, embrace everyone in this, in this, uh, in this challenge. One of the key, as George said, one of the key goals of the project is to develop the university footprint. We are already starting to develop today. We will focus on this um, output. And of course, throughout the year, we intend to disseminate all our materials through the website. So keep updated and keep with us in the, in the presentation, in the, with, the, uh, new, with our newsletter and with the, with the website news. So just a brief look to the, to the footprint. Uh, it is underdeveloped. We are trying to see what can we uh, um, uh, consider in this footprint? What is the, the main goal, what we want to assess? And we want to do this with the involvement of all the uh, um, academic, uni all the community uh, at the universities, uh, at these four universities. But we also uh, would, invite, would like to invite you to join us. And Joe and uh, Alessandro will tell you more how you can do this uh, later. But even if you don't want to join us, you are very welcome to still follow up us and um, maybe uh, uh, try to, um, in a later stage, to do a pilot test in your university or in your campus, try to assess the first results of the calculator. So this is a, a, a very um, participative process uh, that we are now very uh, deeply involved. So I hope this uh, uh, webinar can also foster uh, these in other, in other universities. Thank you very much and hope you enjoy. George? Okay, probably it's my turn. Uh, I hope you can hear me uh, clearly. I'm going Very well. to share my screen. Okay, ciao. Hello everyone, my name is Federico Pulselli, I'm from the University of Siena and uh, I'm going to illustrate to you the uh, USTEP teaching module. So the set of uh, lessons, uh, exercises, games uh, and uh, interaction, interactive activities we are going to give students 
in order to uh, teach them sustainability. Yes, because the, uh, the, the main aim of uh, this uh, intellectual output of the uh, USTEP project is uh, uh, to teach sustainability to using university students, trying to involve also the, uh, the teachers and also uh, the administrative staff, and also hopefully the governmental people of the university uh, in order to make right decision in the, in the future. So uh, you can understand that we are dealing with sustainability. Um, we uh, are going to, um, to, to present this, uh, to implement this uh, module, uh, uh, which is primarily intended for undergraduate students for all courses and degree types and postgraduate students with no specific environmental science background. At the same time, the STEP teaching module adopts the ecological footprint as a tool to express values and give important messages on uh, our life on this planet. That is the only one we had. Uh, so, Two important uh, points uh, to be highlighted are the fact that we are aiming at uh, a transdisciplinary approach and uh, uh, we are trying to uh, communicate the fact that we are living in uh, one planet. Uh, these are two important characteristics of sustainability, transdisciplinarity and just one planet. And we can summarize uh, our approach with this phrase, we should operate within the biophysical limits of the planet, but beyond the boundaries of disciplines. These are the main characteristics of the uh, uh, teaching module that I'm going to illustrate uh, to you. Uh, the structure is made of uh, frontal lessons, interactive discussions, games, digital facilities, videos, class exercises, uh, homework and tests, uh, by which we, uh, we, we will try to have feedback from, uh, from students and teachers and uh, um, have material for research purposes. Uh, we have made uh, some experiments uh, last year and we understood that te the teaching proposal is good for face-to-face -face lesson, for online lesson. Uh, we were forced to do that. Uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, emergency and long distance learning because one of the, our partner, the uh, Università di Aberta, is a long distance uh, university. Uh, the uh, process of the USTEP modules module uh, um, uh, is in three phases. The first one in uh, 2020 was made by the four uh, universities promoter of the, of the project, uh, uh, made of design, implementation and feedbacks from students and ourselves, uh, and the first refinement. The, the second phase is a dissemination through this kind of uh, uh, meetings like, like this one, uh, with our wider com communities, and we um, are looking forward uh, for having your uh, feed feedbacks as well to uh, arrive to the final version that will be spread everywhere for every uh, university in the, in the future. How to access to use step module? The uh, material is available, as said before, by George and Sara in English, Greek, Italian, and Portuguese. And uh, everything can be downloaded from our website after registering. Uh, and uh, slides, uh, uh, articles, presentations, videos, and so on and so forth can be, uh, is available for everyone that can implement, that would like to implement this uh, module. Um, obviously there is a free access without any, any cost, but uh, all, the only one it, that is needed is the, your registration in our website. It is a very easy operation. This is the summary, the very uh, summary of, uh, of our uh, module, uh, which is made of uh, uh, six to 10 or 12 uh, academic hours that can be articulated in, very in, in seven steps that I'm going to illustrate to you um, uh, in one minute. Uh, these are the seven steps, but we can uh, go ahead uh, um, in, uh, to, to all the session. The first session is a, uh, an approach that try to, tries to Im involve uh, students by means of a, a CMAP, trying to, uh, uh, they can be also collective, uh, that is made uh, by all the students together. 
the, the object of the CMAP is the connection between uh, daily activities of the students with environment, economy, society, and institution that can be uh, interpreted however you want. And the result is a, a kind of scheme uh, with which students can visualize the connection. Uh, connection are, are, are a very important aspect of sustainability. These are examples of uh, a CMAP. Uh, uh, and as you can see, uh, they are able to visualize connection uh, among elements. The second session um, is a, a game proposal. Uh, the game is called Fisher for one day, and uh, it's very easy to explain it to, in just one minute. I will try to uh, uh, let you to, to, to show you something about that. Imagine you have a, uh, an accountant, an observer, and in front of you, you have five uh, students who are uh, uh, Fisher. Uh, you can also divide the class uh, in, in groups of five people and ask them to fish how much fish, uh, as much fish as possible in 10 days. This is the only rule you have to uh, to tell them, and they can fish one, two, or three fishes. This is the scheme you have in front of you, and you can start to take into account the choices of the fisher, of the five fishermen. So the first uh, fish two, the second one, the third one, the fourth three, the five two, and the total take is nine. Then you go to the second day, and the second day is like this. And you will see very, very uh, strange faces in your, uh, by your students, uh, strange expressions, but no problem with that. Go ahead with the third day. The third day is like, the, like this. You can take into account all the, uh, all the fish that is uh, taken. Then the, seven, the, the, the fourth day, then going ahead, going ahead until the fifth day. Oh, no, the fifth day uh, is, uh, is not possible because the game is over. Why the game is over? And this is the question you can, a question you can ask students. Why the fish, why the, the game is over? Because the fish is over. Uh, there, not, there is no more fish in the lake. Why? This is, this is the second question you, you can ask. Why? Because there are some problems. For example, some informational pro problems. No one, say, no one uh, knows how many fishes are in the lake at the beginning. And for example, <clears throat> the regeneration rate of the fishes. So you can go ahead with the explanation and uh, uh, I can uh, uh, show to you what uh, happened actually. You have 25 fishes at the beginning, minus nine, you have 16. And here uh, it is important to know the regeneration rate. The regeneration rate with these numbers, with this information, is one fish reborn per five fish remained in the lake at the end of the day. So 16 brings about three new fishes. So the next day you have 19 minus six, that is the result of uh, the fish day. You have 13, that makes two new fishes. You have 15 minus 11, you have four. No new fish can be regenerated because the population is too small uh, with four uh, fishes in the lake, seven, is not possible, so the, the, the game is over. Now, you can give the information to students, 25 fishes at the beginning, and one fish per five remained in the lake at the end of every day. So find a solution to arrive to the, 10, to the day number 10. They will arrive for sure uh, to a different solution, but the most, uh, 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 the, the most, the, the best solution is this one. They will be able talking to each other to find this kind of solution. One fish per fisherman with one without fishes. Remember that the fisherman must eat and must sell uh, the fish uh, to survive. 
So they will distribute the zero among them and they will arrive with 25 fishes at the end of, of the uh, 10 days. And probably uh, they will uh, be able to distribute almost equally uh, the uh, revenues of the, uh, of the activity, of their activity, um, almost equally. So uh, this kind of game that is very easy uh, will uh, inspire uh, a, a lot of uh, um, aspects uh, linked to sustainability. For example, knowledge, the information is important without which uh, we will finish the fishes. Cooperation is important. It's very ancient art uh, that uh, uh, is expressed by uh, the, the ability to talk with each other, the ability of students or fishermen to talk with each other. Equity is also important and sustainability because they will face the fact that the, 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 the resources are, uh, are limited. Let's go on and this can introduce the uh, um, uh, one important aspect of uh, uh, our everyday life that is the overshoot and in particular the overshoot day. The overshoot day is the day in which nature uh, we exhaust the, the, the resources that nature produces every day, renewable nature that uh, produces every day. Uh, the, this indicator is important, especially if seen in time series. We have a, a terrific, uh, tremendous result. Uh, the, the overshoot day arrives uh, always uh, before every every year, we you can uh, find on the internet a lot of representation of the overshoot day. This is very important to represent the finite the finiteness of resources and the fact that we live in just one planet, and we must respect this physical biophysical condition. Session three: sustainability and SDGs. Okay, we must mention the SDGs, and we can uh, make class exercises uh, asking students to connect uh, schools or universities, uh, both as institution and the institute they attend actually, with every one of the, uh, of the 17 sustainable development goals, which is very important to stimulate rational and uh, uh, different aspects. You know that we have 17 goals in the agenda 2030, uh, divided into 169 uh, detailed targets. They are, have been negotiated by the United Nations, so it's a very important um, initiative, probably the most important in the sustainability field all around the world. And uh, uh, we have these since 2015 and will rest with us, will remain with us uh, until 2030. We have a lot uh, of things to do uh, by 2030. Uh, United Nations identified three words, in, three important words to describe the, uh, the uh, Agenda 2030 and the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, the first the universality. Everyone is involved and uh, no one must be left behind. This goal applies to every nation and every sector, cities, businesses, schools, organization, all, all are challenged to act. The second word is integration. It is recognized that all the goals are interconnected in a system. We cannot aim to achieve just one goal because achieving one goal can um, uh, jeopardize uh, the, the, the achieving of another one. So they must uh, consider all uh, together. We must achieve them all. The third uh, important word is transformation. It is widely recognized that achieving this work, these goals involves making very big fundamental changes in how we live on Earth. Uh, we must see, we, we must say also because, uh, but however, the, the Sustainable Development Goal Initiative presents also a lot of opportunities for our development and for our future, not only sacrifice, also opportunities. Session four, the ecological footprint is uh, the core of the OSTEP pro project. It is an important environmental accounting um, method. Uh, and it is important for us because uh, on one hand, it is an assessment uh, method uh, with technical aspects and a rigorous uh, um, method for accounting 
uh, consumption of resources. On the other end, it is a very powerful communication tool. So it is important uh, because it can carry uh, important messages uh, about the finiteness of resources and uh, also uh, indicating uh, what to do. So the opportunities I was talking about before. Uh, you can um, you can take a handle uh, the uh, the aspects of ecological footprint however you want. You can go in deep in the methodology, or you can simply introduce the fact that we can measure consumption, translate it uh, our consumption, our the, the thing we we need every day, uh, translating them into uh, land category and calculating a uh, a footprint. What is a footprint? An, an area surface. And uh, all our consumption can be translated into uh, um, uh, the area that is necessary to provide uh, uh, the goods and the services uh, we need every day. We have the ecological footprint on one hand, on one side, that is our demand of goods and services from nature. And on the other side, we have the biocapacity. Uh, that is what nature is able to actually provide to us. So the comparison within the two uh, can uh, help us understand if we are within the limits or beyond the limits of our planet. This is an important message. Uh, we can go from consumption in the calculation of the ecological footprint to the total ecological footprint. And we can go from the area we have uh, is, is uh, available for us to the total biocapacity uh, following the same scheme, the same conversion factor, the same uh, uh, ecological, ecologic, ecology based uh, accounting method. Uh, uh, you can go in depth uh, with this methodology with the, the material you can download from our website. And we can have a look to our situation, our own situation at home, our personal situation, but the situation all around the, the world, the differences between uh, the, the countries of, of the world. Uh, the next session is uh, the calculation of uh, your personal ecological footprint. I'm not illustrating it to you because it will be the, uh, the, the, the argument the, uh, the core of the next presentation this morning. Uh, it is, uh, just to say, it is a very, very effective exercise that can involve and uh, interact uh, with the students in the uh, transmission of the ecological footprint message and sustainability message as well. The session is, uh, six is devoted to uh, the sustainability within uh, your and our own university. So uh, students will be uh, uh, invited to find some example of uh, um, sustainable and unsustainable aspects uh, within the university and suggest something to improve performances and uh, uh, involve other people and communicate uh, values, aspects, and uh, uh, stimulate to everyone. So what is sustainability in university? Some aspect of university sustainability, factor indicators related to university sustainability, scales and indicator uses used to assess university sustainability and some example. As you can see, this is deeply connected. This uh, session is deeply connected with the second main aim of the USTEP uh, project. That is the uh, building of the um, uh, university uh, footprint calculator, uh, which we are working on uh, in these weeks. Uh, the session seven clause, clause is the, concludes uh, the, the module, uh, and uh, it can be summarized with another CMAP made by the entire class, uh, which is hopefully more aware of the things we are talking about uh, because th they uh, attended all the, all the modules. So, uh, restart the CMAP in your blackboard and see if something changed after uh, the module. Uh, the module uh, includes some class exercises, uh, Fisher for one day, the connection of SDGs and university, footprint calculator that will be explained in, uh, in brief, 
uh, two concept map at the beginning and the, at the end of the module and some homework that you can uh, ask uh, students to do. Uh, sustainability future at your university, personal ecological footprint in your day, daily life as uh, sustainability around the world. Finding example, uh, finding uh, stimuli, finding solution, finding uh, aspects that can be connected with the things uh, we are giving them during the module. Um, we are uh, refining the guidelines for teachers in order to uh, extend the information I'm, I try to illustrate to you in these 10 minutes. And I thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, you can find all the stuff in your website uh, and uh, it can be uh, of help in uh, uh, giving your uh, uh, module, giving your your uh, lesson. Now, um, I um, uh, give the floor to uh, Alessandro Galli from uh, GFN and Nicoletta Patrizzi from the University of Siena, because they will go uh, to propose to you, we are going to propose to you uh, an exercise, a direct exercise of uh, the footprint calculator. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Fede. And Fede. <clears throat> okay, so very quickly, I think, uh, so this is Alessandro um, from Global Footprint Network. And by now, I think you should have um, realized that two things. One, that the module in itself, we are really trying to uh, make it interactive uh, because our goal is really not to just teach sustainability in an abstract way, but to have students realize what sustainability is with this strong connection with the, with the daily life. Uh, the other um, things that you may have realized by, by now is that we are trying to use uh, in this uh, webinar most of the uh, techniques that the module is, uh, is using. I mean, the CMAP, the presentations, and also the games. So we would like you uh, to play with you uh, the, uh, the calculator uh, game. So I'm going to just copy paste in the chat the information, the link with the, um, with the calculator. Uh, okay, if I can find it here. So this is the link to the calculator. So I would like to ask you all uh, to please um, click on the link and access the, the calculator. And Nico, can you just confirm that you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so this is the first page of the calculator. What is important to say, sorry, I go back, uh, is that we have developed uh, this calculator at Global Footprint Network over the past years. This version that you see has been launched uh, in 2017. And since then we have had about uh, more than 3 million users a day. And most of the users are really indicating a uh, very high usefulness of this calculator in helping the user understand what their personal uh, impact is on the planet. So, because this is a part, a, a very a, a core part of the module, uh, we would like you to experience firsthand what this is about. So if you just take the first step, you can uh, fill this calculator. Before you do that, I would like to just tell you a couple of quick information. Uh, the calculator is structured to have a detailed question or uh, let's say general question. In class with students, of course, we suggest that the detailed uh, questions are asked. So here, for instance, you see a lot of details on the different uh, food commodities. But for the sake of this game, please uh, just use the, uh, the basic uh, question. I also ask you to open uh, a second tab on Slido because we will run a quick um, poll at the end of the, uh, of the calculator, the link in, in here. Um, so if you 
can go ahead and maybe take 10 minutes to, to fill the, um, the calculator. When you are done with filling the calculator, we will give you instruction on uh, adding the, uh, some responses to Slido. But just uh, remember to keep the page of the calculator open. So you can just use this slider to adjust your answer and then click on the right arrow to move forward and just uh, give us a, a sign on the chat when you are done filling the calculator and you see the first uh, results page. Okay, I see um, some question from uh, Elif and then um, also some indication that some of the attendees are already uh, finishing the, uh, the filling the calculator. So first on the question, um, there is a quick question on whether we are changing the question, I guess the, the calculator questions on the basis of COVID. Uh, for the time being, um, what we have seen is that um, the already with these questions and changes in the behavior of people, uh, we are seeing reductions in the ecological footprint uh, of, uh, of individuals. Um, so already with this question, uh, reductions are seen, but it's true that there are probably uh, different behaviors that um, are emerging that are not fully captured by the calculator. Um, we can take a note of this. Uh, I mean, we are constantly uh, looking for ways uh, to, to improve the calculator. So we'll do that. Um, If you do not use a car or motorcycle, you can just uh, put uh, uh, move the, the slider to, to indicate um, that you are not using it. I'm just like showing again this. So this is, for instance, where you can just put on zero kilometers uh, if you use uh, no um, car or motor uh, cycles. And then if you put zero in here, there is no need to uh, be concerned about, well, actually, let's see. There is a following question that asks you about the fuel uh, efficiency of your vehicles. Uh, so where you have put zero, there is no need to uh, worry about the indicating the efficiency. Um, I see other people start to get the results. Now I have not, like answer properly, but just to give you an indication at the end of the of the quiz, you should see uh, a first uh, page with your uh, results. And these are uh, just the overview uh, results. So in, in this case, this is indicating that uh, if everyone on the planet had the same lifestyle that I have indicated with my uh, answer, humanity will need the equivalent of almost four and a half uh, planets to be uh, sustained. So uh, it will take basically four and a half planets to uh, produce all the resources and get rid of all the waste that humanity use in one year. So you see a, a imbalance, of course, in between the planet we have and the, how many planet we use. And again, if everyone lived like me, uh, the overshoot day, which is the day in which um, we have used up all the uh, natural resource budget for the year will be the 24th of March. If you click on see details, you can explore uh, a bit more about uh, the, um, the details of your uh, ecological footprint. So in, in my case, uh, it is mostly made of 
my uh, the pressure that I pose on ecosystems to sequester CO2 uh, emissions, uh, followed by the pressure that I pose on croplands, and this is mostly due to my uh, food consumption. And here you see the categories that uh, contribute the most to your ecological footprint. Now, before going into the details, uh, we would like to ask you to fill uh, the, some information on Slido. So I'm stopping to share, and Nicoletta, Nico, you can share uh, the screen yourself. So in, uh, well, I'm checking on the chat just to see uh, how people are doing in terms of feeling. The questionnaire, but whenever you have finished, you can start adding the information on, on Slido. And again, you can either just scan, I mean, uh, with your uh, mobile phone, uh, even just a picture should work, the QR code, or you can uh, directly go online on uh, slido.com. So for now, we have about 20 questions, 21, sorry, 20, 22 answers. Uh, I just <clears throat> take a few seconds as we wait for more answer to, um, uh, to come up, to say that um, these uh, results is indeed not uh, surprising because uh, as I was mentioning before, we have seen uh, in the past three, four years, um, really a very high use of this calculator. Um, when we implemented the EU STEPS module in the four universities that are partner of the project, um, we have then uh, evaluated, uh, I mean, gather student feedback on, on the calculator. And the majority of them, I think about 93% of, uh, of the students involved, mentioned this calculator to be uh, the best uh, teaching tool within um, the module to, for them to be able to understand uh, their impact on the planet and for them to learn about uh, sustainability. But we have also run uh, a survey on the overall users uh, of the calculators. Uh, and we have seen that um, the majority of the users, uh, which is about like 35% of the users, are uh, in the age between 18 and 24 years old, and they have been exposed to this uh, calculator uh, within an educational uh, setup and have heard about it from their uh, educators. So this is not surprising to see that uh, about half uh, of you have uh, already used the calculator in your own work. So I see a question now by Marvich about the, the care that he has, uh, I, I think, in, in reducing its carbon footprint. Well, the, the lower is your uh, carbon footprint or the carbon component of the ecological footprint, and the later in the year uh, this should be. Now, usually at this point, uh, a lot of uh, interesting uh, discussion, uh, of course, start to emerge with the, um, with the students because uh, they, they start to realize that even if they think they have, uh, let's say, very environmentally aware uh, behaviors or um, let's say uh, they make environmentally aware uh, decisions, uh, they realize that they have high uh, footprint. So we will see in a second what contributes to your footprint. So I'm just waiting uh, a few more minutes uh, for a few more answer. Um, there is a question from Claudia. OK, there are question. The question is about, uh, I think, the mode of consumption, recycling, and the um, economy, uh, well, the, the circular economy. There are uh, questions, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, about 
the the amount of waste that is um, produced by um, by the users, and then if you add um, the if you select the detailed uh, questions, there are more questions about uh, the type of commodities you use and how frequently you buy uh, new things. Uh, one of the reason uh, why the calculator is let's say, not comprehensive, uh, is that um, the calculator is uh, not supposed to provide, uh, let's say, uh, a definitive uh, assessment of your ecological footprint. It's mostly, um, let's say, a, a tool for uh, awareness. And it is uh, complemented by our detailed uh, national footprint uh, accounts in which indeed all these uh, detailed questions are uh, are asked so the the, the, the i think the um, the point here is that we want to keep a balance uh, in between uh, what is the detail the level of detail in the questions but at the same time uh, the the length the number of questions and uh, how easy to use uh, the calculator uh, is for different uh, age group so right now a uh, specific calculator about um, a specific question about circular economy are not uh, included um, so let's move to the second question which is to indicate in which month uh, does your personal Earth Overshoot Day fall? So again, looking at the information you found um, in the detail calculator page, if you can start uh, adding in the information about the, uh, the month. Okay, so here <clears throat> um, we were saying before uh, this information is uh, mostly uh, used um, uh, with students to basically reflect on what is the overall, um, let's say, uh, consequences uh, of, their, um, of their lifestyle. And this is uh, related to what I was saying before uh, about the, um, the attempt of this module to have the students realize through their personal life how the different choices they make in different uh, aspect of their daily life cause an impact on the planet. Now, on at the global level, uh, last year, Overshoot Day was on August uh, 22nd. So we see that uh, of, uh, of us attending the event, only 12% of us have, um, let's say, a personal overshoot day in December, meaning that it's coming after the, uh, the Earth overshoot day. The majority of us, however, are um, characterized, have uh, a personal overshoot that is uh, falling way before during the, during the year. We see like either April or, or May. Uh, we should have resolved the, the connection issue with Nico. So I give now the floor to her. Um, do you want me to still keep showing this or you're, will you share no, your no. own screen? Please keep it, keep it you because it's the second time that we have audio issues with Slido. <laughs> I don't okay. know why. Uh, okay, uh, now we are going um, we are going on with other two questions uh, that we are using usually with students. Um, before in doing this, I'm asking you to go to the second page of results of the calculator because our questions are related to, to, the, to this point. Um, the question that we are um, giving you through slide or just an example on the discussion that we usually we have with students after the calculators. Uh, Ale, can you go on in the next one, please? Uh, as you can see, we are asking uh, about your consumption category. Um, please note that uh, for doing this, we have developed 
in, within and, uh, and among the materials an Excel file in which you can report all results of uh, your students so that you can, pre you can present in a cumulative way all their results in terms of overshoot day, in terms of total footprint per divided per line type and per consumption categories. This uh, type of division can help and foster a discussion about the relations about every daily, daily life and the total ecological footprint and how it is connected to their choices. Uh, usually we are doing this type of exercises, namely the uh, ecological footprint calculator twice. This is the first round because we are just uh, capturing the current and the actual uh, pressure that every one of us is um, putting on the natural resources of our planet. And then by uh, reflecting and by saying to students uh, and highlighting their um, consumption style, we can mm, mm, uh, in, encourage to thinking how we, they can reduce their footprint by knowing where they are putting more pressure. And also we are highlighting and we are discussing with students about the fact that uh, even though the climate change is the most urgent and important problem on the uh, on the planet, there is the, is not the only one, unfortunately. So to tackle all the different um, issues that we are posing as humanity on the planet, we need to have a uh, an, um, a system a systemic view, and we can have this only talking about and um, thinking about sustainability. So by uh, just um, running these this simple exercises, the question and the discussion that can arise among the class and among the students is uh, 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 are a lot. So we can say that uh, almost uh, all of us are um, putting pressure on the planet by the food demand. And this is a quite, uh, a quite normal uh, um, result. I would say uh, it is a, an average and usually we obtain this type of results also with our students. Uh, we, can, we can pass to the next one. That is, if you are expecting these results and if you are surprised in this sense. I usually, uh, me and Federico usually had a lot of fun uh, with students because we put our uh, result as well inside the, the whole class and saying that we should have have a very low ecological footprint because we are uh, dealing with sustainability and we know how to, let's say, have a low impact lifestyle. Nevertheless, uh, at least it, it's very difficult for everyone to have this, but we can start and we can have a discussion on what we, are, we, are, we can commit to try to decrease our ecological footprint. So, just, uh, just not, not all are uh, surprised in uh, um, in having this type of results. Just, just a little, uh, not not that much, and but usually all people thought that uh, maybe they have a lower ecological footprint less than mm, they get as a result after the calculator. And we can have all this type of discussion with students uh, again, we can ask how they have been, if they have been able to decrease their ecological footprint, when, uh, in which type of um, consumption category they, um, they decide to change something and how. So is, um, th this question was just, uh, just um, an example of, of what we can discuss and what we can achieve with students during uh, a lesson. 
we have in the in the Excel file at the end we have also put some question that we can have with students to guide the discussion among the class. So I think that with the calculator, if you don't have any specific question or other question, we can uh, stop. As Alessandro said at the beginning of this this session, we have just um, give you a first hand experience on what we are proposing with students and just to understand and just to see what what could be the discussion among the uh, the source that we are pro um, proposing you as a uh, educators. So I think we can go towards the the end of this uh, um, this, uh, this this event, uh, and I leave the floor to Sandra from Caerio from Università Aberta. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm Sandra Queiro, as Nicoleta said, from uh, Universidade Aberta, from, from Portugal, uh, living in Lisbon. Um, so we apologize because we are a little bit late, but you know, these technical problems sometimes happen. So, uh, but for, for sure, we won't be longer than until uh, 1130. So uh, we, I, we would just like at the end to ask you uh, two more questions, easy ones, just say yes or no. Um, and so now go again to the slido.com and you have the, the number in the screen that you can, you can see it. Um, so one of these questions is, so please, Nico, thank you. It will be very important for us to know if you would like, would be interested in implementing these EUSTEP models within your courses. Um, and hopefully you are doing the, your questions, uh, your answers, sorry. And while we are waiting for uh, your answers on this, if you have uh, any question you'd like to ask us, uh, or put it in the chat and we'll be glad to answer to you. Have you any doubts about the issues we presented earlier and within the project, the teaching modes, the calculator, etc. Uh, we, we have this final time of the, the event to be able to answer any questions you would like us to uh, ask. But so far from the, the answers we have, we know, and it's, it's very good to know that 80% of you will be interested in implementing the models uh, we developed so far. And this is very good news for us because that the main idea of this project is to produce these materials and that can be spread and, and freely used uh, in the different contexts. So, uh, all the institutions and the persons, uh, etc., can have an important role as educators for uh, sustainability. So um, it's good to know someone are still in doubt. Maybe they, you need also, of course, to uh, see the materials in more detail, and they are available on the website, and then see uh, if. Um, you, you can use it uh, uh, or not. So we can still wait one more minute or so to so you could finish these first questions. Nevertheless, is is a good result for our uh, uh, point of view, of course. Um, okay, maybe, and we of course we understand, as I said that some of you need to see in more detail uh, um, the, uh, the models and the different materials. Um, so, yeah, thank you. We are showing where you can see the teaching materials in the different languages. As Sara said, you just need to register and, and see from one point of view how the model is organized. Um, 
and um, and then the different uh, documents available in each of the topics. Yeah, is there any questions that the persons that say maybe are are do you need us to 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 answer and help you to have uh, this answer or of course they could be related to the fact that you need to see it in more detail so um nevertheless i think we can move on to the next question nico please thank you <laughs> so uh now what we'd like to ask you uh, if uh, would you benefit from a dedicated educator training to be able to use the model in your teaching? And, and this question could be related with the ones that say maybe, maybe you feel that you still need to have some training to use the models. Um, so uh, it seems so far that yes, you will benefit. And this is also an information very important for us to continue our job within the project, of course. And, and as, as we said, um, if you don't mind, to, we could spend some minutes and if you want to talk, and ask some question, not only using the chat, but doing in a voice way. You can do it, of course, just raise your hand so we know that you want to talk, please. Thank you, Raya, <laughs> for, for the great job you said to us, thank you. But we see that most of you would, would benefit from a dedicated educated training. So we are, you will be able to use the model in your own teaching. And we understand of course that you need to explore the resources and to see if you can use it. Of course you can use it just a part of it. You don't need to use it, all of them. It depends of course within the context, the students, um, etc. Uh, <clears throat> I think Ro Roya asked to speak, I think. I see there is a rising hands. Um, Leticia, can you check? Yeah, I don't see any raising she's hands. On. She's on, Roya is okay. on. Uh, yes, thank okay. you so much. It is very interesting. I really appreciate that it is middle of the night here in Los Angeles. Uh, but uh, I'm very excited and I'm listening to you guys. Uh, the only question that I have is this one that I teach public uh, administration and public policy. And then uh, I try to design a course that is related to this field of study uh, because unfortunately I was not able to convince the dean uh, of our school to put a specific course for this issue. Uh, so uh, somehow I have a problem because uh, I, I want to um, have some uh, relation between, although it is completely related, sustainability is related to everything. However, I want to know if you work in this area that we can uh, design a course for each specific field of a study. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, interesting question. I, I don't know if, um, because there is a similarity between what uh, Sara in Universidad Aveiro used these models within the context of a similar course, I guess, Sara, maybe you could add something as an example what you have done within your, um, where you use the model and you do in the undergraduate program where you use it. Well, thanks, Roy. It's a, a really interesting question because I teach in public administration yeah. degrees as well and public policies. And we use the materials to start uh, connecting uh, the students to the topic of sustainability and, and connection from theory to practice and our daily lives. And then we go back to the, to the policies and to the public policy level. 
uh, in my case is regional planning and urban urban planning specifically but i think you can use the materials somehow to uh, start debating the topic and then of course you can uh, reformulate and 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 specify certain policies uh, to tackle the the challenges we discuss with the topic but we yes, can get contact if you wish <laughs> thank you okay did it help you uh, yes i i did oh, i yeah. designed a, a green health care but i i have to try a, a, it was one course only that I was okay. able to convince the dean to teach this course. Uh, but uh, related to policy, I have to try again and definitely I'm gonna use your suggestion. Thank okay, you. okay. But you, if you want to explore the materials and then discuss with us, please just, just contact him. And of course we can help you or, or give him some uh, ideas anyway. Would be great, definitely. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you so and, much. Thank you. Uh, thank you also. I, I'm seeing uh, Ohelian the camps uh, 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 comment. It's what a coincidence because we had a meeting yesterday, but we didn't talk about this meeting of today. <laughs> and and he shared with us um, the Sully test uh, uh, literacy uh, survey, which is very useful also. And of course, it could be, for example, integrated within this uh, this model is very good for evaluation of uh, um, sustainability of literacy between students, teachers, etc. Thanks you. Thank you for your, your comment and thanks for your participation and suggestion. Um, Okay, uh, I think about this second question is clear that uh, a big percentage would like uh, to benefit from uh, a dedicated educated training to help uh, the model. This is a, an important information for us uh, since we could uh, also uh, conduct this, this training as as we've done previously as we said also um we we would like to say that um all of you will send uh, at the end by email a, a, a brief survey that will be important for us to give your feedback of this uh, event and but just we will send you by email as as i said um, I don't know if you still have uh, more questions. Thank you, Ellie is already answering the chat some of the questions you are uh, having. Uh, people that would like to use the model in different contexts, namely in Japan. So for now, we don't have Japanese version, as Ellie said, English. Uh, but we have, as we said, four languages available, uh, English, Italian, Portuguese, and uh, uh, Greek. Um, we have also a question, uh, do you provide pedagogical framework materials to readjust to learning outcomes to allow us to integrate the materials and assess accordingly? Um, of course, we give uh, instructions how, we can, you, how can you use it with all the different uh, activities uh, and like the way you could use it along the time but of course, this is only uh, a recommendation or a suggestion you, you, we give, but you can adjust wherever it is more appropriate within your course. And as we said, you, you are not supposed to use everything. You can use a part or it depends, of course, a lot on, on your uh, context. And of course, readjustments can, can, uh, can be used. And of course, we can also help with, with this. Um, okay, Anastasia already show also and, and disseminate um, an important uh, network, the Mediterranean Engineer Schools. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for sharing your email, uh, Relian. Um, something written in Greek, okay. Uh, and Ellie is also answering uh, uh, questions. Vera, so, you may go ahead. Yeah, Vera has a question. 
Um, thank you very much for the possibility. Thank you for the interesting presentation. And I just want to um, add something about our EcoFood project in five sentences that complements your EU STEPS project Great. Very thank perfectly. You. Um, the material comprises of six units for in-class or online training, which is also slides and teaching materials um, for the... Um, class and seven units for e-learning for the age of 10 to 18. And it is available in English, in German, in Greek, in Romanian and Hungarian. It is on the ecological footprint and we structured it in four areas, nutrition, mobility, housing and other consumption. And we also included a mini hectare workshop to show the students how to live within the fair share, um, which could look like um, the, the students are living it in an interactive approach. And the calculator we just used, um, it can only be used once. And we developed a version which works on a daily basis for individuals and shows the daily choices in diet, one vegan meal instead of a beef steak or mobility one ride per bike instead of taking the car already make a difference at these scales. It shall empower the users to make individual changes, but it also shows that systematic changes are dearly needed for a one planet living and not to go into overshoot. The e-learning and the calculator can be used free of charge on the website ecofood.eu and I would like you invite you to take a look and share this information with teachers and undergraduates. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Vera. Maybe you could, I don't know if you have done it already in the chat and, and uh, put the, the website where those materials and all things are available. So all yeah, the she, she put the link of oh, the, okay. of the I website. Just, I yeah, get yeah. trapped, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah, saw it, thank you. Great, great. Uh, thank you. So it's it's so good to share all these uh, um, activities that are going on, and this is also the purpose of this um, um, event: is not only to show how the things we are done, but doing, but also the things that others are doing, and and we have can have this this connection. So I think we are running time and we need to finish. We, we just would like to remind you as a summary that of course you can use the models uh, as is avail are available on the website in the four languages, as we said, using goal, part, wherever you'd like to is, is open resources. Um, if you want to, to be a reviewer of the calculator, uh, the university calculator, we'll be glad if you contact us um, and, and, and be of, of our help. Uh, you can also be as a, a, your institution, a pilot uh, tester. Uh, as you said, on the website of the project, we have all the information uh, about the materials and all the activities we are doing uh, us, what we are, we are doing so far. Um, you can uh, contact us through the, uh, the, 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 the contacts are on the website uh, or contact directly with the coordinator, George. Um, and thank you so much. Um, for sharing this one hour and a half uh, about the things we are doing to having your feedback is, is very important uh, uh, for us. So we'd like to ask you if you mind to turn on your camera so you can take a picture. And thank you so much. I'm, I have this role of finalizing uh, this uh, this event. I want to thank you so much. Thank you all the also the earlier uh, presenters. Um, okay, <laughs> thank you so much. We have people from all over the world, from the United States to Japan, Europe, etc. is is very good, and we are very happy with with it. Let's keep in touch, of course. We we'll await your news and your feedback, and thank uh, you for attending the project and the webinar. 